<laughs> I'm whipped. I tell you. I was thinking the other day, yesterday as a matter of fact, that uh, people really don't think too much about this internet. You know, maybe the way they should. I thought, what if you dropped dead today? Or, you know, got in a car accident, or you died, or somehow you weren't around anymore. Do you realize that your Facebook account, your Twitter account, goes right on without you? Whatever you said last is your last words to humanity? That you'll be remembered for the last things you posted? Literally? Hmm. Imagine that. Imagine if the only thing people had to remember you by was whatever you posted on the internet. Huh. You know, all that junk that you kind of like threw out there that you thought, nah, nobody reads it. What if that was like, you know, a few years from now, somebody looked you up and said, hey, that's the last thing he had to say. Wow. Guy was a bitter old man or whatever it may be that you may have posted or written. And you know, I got to thinking about that. What if you died? Are people going to say, well, he was a jovial old fellow, you know, I mean, kind of like a Saint Nick, you know, laughing and carrying on and having a good old time. Or are people going to say something else about you? Are they going to say he was angry a lot? Or he was happy a lot? Or he talked a lot about Jesus, or talked a lot about politics, or what would someone say if you died? What are the last words that people are going to remember you by? I know, I see in movies, you know, lots of times, I'm sure you've seen them, where people say, if only I had said goodbye, or if only I had told them how much I loved them. You know, those longing regrets that people have when they don't have the opportunity to say anything more because they're gone? Huh. What about that? What do you want to be remembered by? What do you want to be remembered for? What are the last words that are going to come out of your mouth on the day you die? What will be the last things that people have to look for to find out about you? What if somebody Googled you right now? What would they see? You know, what would they what would they get a handle on, you know, when they wanted to find out what you were really like? Have you put out a memorial? Have you established yourself in the community that people would stand up and recognize you for who you were? Or would they just simply say, well, he was a businessman? What are you? Who are you? And more important, what are you going to be remembered for? You know, it's pretty easy to make a video. pretty easy to pop off some comments on Facebook, even make a Facebook page. It's not that hard to Twitter. Probably not too hard to write a note or a last will and testament. Most people don't like to get those things that done ahead of time. Me, I've been planning for my death all my life. So I kind of wonder, you know, if you're born a Christian, what do you, what kind of legacy are you leaving behind, you know, for people to know about you? What do you want to be remembered as? Because you have a choice right now to kind of establish that as a testimony. What would people give as a testimony about you? Well, that depends on what you do now. You see, you don't know the day or the hour that the Son of Man will return for you, meaning the day you die. I don't mean the rapture, because that could happen any time, but it ain't going to happen in 2012. But anyways, any time after that, it could happen. But the point is, is that you could also die in the meantime. And maybe you're saved, and woo you're out of here. But what about the people that are left behind? You know, your loved ones, the people you didn't say goodbye to, people you forgot to maybe make it a point to watch what your words were the posts that you said, the things that you did, you know, your attitudes and actions that kind of came across more than you wanted them to. 
that nobody really saw your heart. But your mouth revealed it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, I kind of wonder, maybe we ought to start thinking about what we're doing and saying and writing and considering this day could be our last day. And this last post or this last video could be our last video. This could be the last time you have a chance to talk to someone or tell them you love them or you want them to know Jesus or in some way you wanted to leave behind a kind of a witness. Maybe you ought to be thinking about that. I know I did and I have. And I've been working on that for a long time now because I want to leave behind a heritage for others to look at. Oh, I don't expect to be famous in this life. <laughs> Matter of fact, I don't expect to be famous in the next, meaning that in eternity. But you know, I am glad that today, just today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not yesterday, but today I really am tired and exhausted because I really poured out all my energy, all the time that I have, all the resources that I got, you know, for today. Used them all, you know, for the kingdom of God. It wore me out. <laughs> I've literally raised my bar and my standard a little higher, and I'm reaching higher to grab for that too. And I keep reaching higher and trying to get more and trying to grow for more. And it's not because I want, you know, any kudos or fame or fortune. Nah. I just think it'd be kind of nice to leave something behind that. Maybe I could touch someone's life, you know, and help them along the way. Maybe they might see something in me that inspires them to follow the person I'm following. Maybe they'll go after Jesus with everything they got inside. Can you come down? While you have light, believe in the light. Whenever we look at utmost, we're always talking about giving it all we got. And that's why I like wrapping up my day with utmost for his highest and our utmost video because I get a chance to reflect on well, what what did I not get done today? What did I still want to do and then what have I done with my time? You know, have I have I accomplished the things that I really wanted to do? Should I really push farther and harder and longer today, you know, to try to get more done? You know, or can I let it go and leave it alone and let God take what I've gotten and offer it to him as a pleasing sacrifice today. You know, the effort of my hands, leaving it before him and see if he takes it as a sacrifice. Kind of like Cain and Abel, you know how they got the together their fruit, you know, one of them and their cattle, the other one, you know, and offered it to God at the end of the day. Do you ever do that? Do you ever think about your day was meant to be an offering to the Lord that you, at the end of the day, you know, God looks at what you've done with your day and then receives it or rejects it according to His will. You don't look at it that way? Huh. Maybe you ought to. Maybe that's what the Bible says. Maybe each day is a gift from God to use as He wants us to, not as we choose to, and that He would want us to start the day with Him, to spend the day with Him, and then to offer to Him the accomplishments of what we've done with our day. For after all, has he not given us life? And is not life but an offering back to him of what we have lived and enjoyed and experienced with him today? Think about it. Maybe you're missing the point of why you live and breathe and move and have your being. Maybe you've forgotten why you're saved. Maybe you don't understand that it really is about your utmost to give to God for his highest. Maybe you need to think about that. We all have moments when we feel better than our best. And we say, oh man, I feel fit for anything. If only I could be like this always. We're not meant to be. Those moments are moments of insight and inspiration, which we have to live up to when we do not feel like it. It's good to have them one moment, but we gotta live with them for the rest of the moment. Kinda like my weekend. And I was so thrilled to be inspired by the new website that I have, that God has shown the revelation of how he wants it to be done and to move forward in it and expanding it and 
you know, biblical Christian hours come along, a video goes along, and I'm like, wow, this is cool, and I'm just throwing pieces of the web page together, and this together, and that together, and things are going good, and even when a problem came up, it was like, oh no, it's all falling apart, oh no, it came back, it's okay, it's saved, yeah, woo, ran off, and you know, doing more and more, and then today, boom, wow, Lord, it's tough today, man, it's kind of a challenge, <laughs> What happened yesterday? <laughs> Man, yesterday was smooth sailing. <laughs> and it won't be long before that will be changing because now we must grow. So guess what? I want you to know he's going to change you just because he loves you. Or maybe that squeeze you. <laughs> Benny Hester. But the point being is that today, I'm kind of glad for the day that, you know, it's not like yesterday's I can do anything. And today now it's like, wow, I'm struggling to finish what I'm doing. I'm glad that we do have those moments where we are challenged and quickened by His Spirit to look at and analyze where we came from yesterday's momentary excitement and joy and say, now we make it live throughout the week. We make it go forward with our faith and our guts and our determination, our faith and our attitude. Those moments are moments of insight which we have to live up to when we do not feel like it. Many of us are no good for this workaday world when there is no high hour or no momentary feeling and no inspiration, no glory, no presence, no music. You know, rings on your fingers and bells on your toes so you have music wherever you go. You know, your iPod, all that stuff, you know. <laughs> Battery died. Oh no, God's dead. <laughs> Sorry, iPad. Oh well. But what do you do when you don't do all those things? Fall back in sin. <laughs> no. We must bring our commonplace life up to the standard that we were revealed in at the time when we were inspired. We must bring our normal life up to the inspiration we feel in our inspired life. So we bring all of it to the place of inspiration, not just moments of inspiration. Never allow a feeling which was stirred in you in the high hour to evaporate. Take it with you every day. Don't put your mental feet on the mantelpiece and say, what a marvelous state of mind to be in. Act immediately. Do something. If only because you would rather not do it. If in a prayer meeting God has shown you something to do, don't say, oh, I'll do it. You know, I'll pray about it. Do it. Get off your butt. Get with it. Get ready. Go for it. Now. Not wait. Not debate, not delegate, but do it. That's the whole point. If God inspires you something to do, then do it. Video was established by just simply running with it at the moment that it came about. Bingo. Let's run with it, Lord, and see if you're in it. If you're not, you'll stop it, and if not, we'll go for it until you do. <laughs> oh, boy, Lord, you're not stopping it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't keep up with you. <laughs> Don't put your mental feet on it and act immediately and do something, but rather go for it. And if in a prayer meeting God has shown you something to do, don't do it, but just don't say you'll do it, but rather do it. Take yourself by the scruff of the neck and shake off your incarnate laziness. You bum. Get off the couch. Don't watch worship. Go do worship. Go be worship. Go act in it. Laziness is always seen in cravings for the high hour. Oh, if it was only like it was before. Oh, if I could only go to that church. If I could only be with that ministry. If I could only do that pastor. If I could only go that place. If I could only have that presence. Oh, if I could only have that glory. If I could only have that word. If I could only have that tongue. <laughs> we have to learn to live in the gray day according to what we saw when we were on the mountaintop. Learn to rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Sometimes you got to put the emphasis where it belongs. Again I say, rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. And again. Now you look at that scripture different. See, it says rejoice in the Lord always. But the part that's added is because they have to keep saying it. And again I say rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Because the people are rejoicing. And again I say rejoice. Beginning to get it? Yeah. You got to say that because guess what? And again you need to be reminded on the great days to rejoice. Yeah. 
It's the way it works. And again I say rejoice. Now you look at that scripture totally different. Don't cave in because you have been baffled once. Get at it. Go for it again. Try. Step up. Step to the plate. Take your swing. Three strikes, you're out. Guess what? Sit down. Get up again when it's your turn. And swing again. <laughs> Hit me with your best shot because I'm coming back at it. I'm going for it, man. We're just going to keep trying and trying and going and going. Even when you're tired. And even when you're blowing it. So what? Get up. Get cleaned up. Dust yourself off. Ask forgiveness. Take a look in the mirror. Take a look in the Word and go forward. Burn your bridges behind you and stand committed to God by your own act. Always go forward with God. Never stand there as though you can go backwards or you have an escape route. No, you go forward no matter what until the day of salvation that he brings you home to be with him. Never revise your decisions, but see that you make your decisions in the light of the inspiration that God has given you. For once God has pointed you in the direction you should go, go with it with all you got, as much as you got, with everything you got, and run as hard as you can to you smack in a wall. Because if you do that, you'll find there is no wall at all. It's only in your own imagination because God is directing you. He will steer you in the way you should go. Never settle for less than everything you got in all you do and in all your ways. When you acknowledge Him, give it all of your heart. Give it your passion. Give it your feeling. Give it your good. And you know what? God will make it great. <laughs> Especially when it's on those gray days. Especially when you're tired like I am at the end of the day when you want to go, man, what a day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm glad that's done. <laughs> man, I got a lot done, but you know, I'm kind of tired. No, be huffing and puffing because the best times is the times when you've given it everything you got. And then all of a sudden, bam, God just says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done.